Good morning, everyone. What is going on? We're back again with another episode of the South Florida Gamers Podcast, episode 51. You already know who I am, the host, Silverback Senpai, and across from me is Waluigi. Morning, everybody. We had a fun episode last week with Chaco Taco, but now we have some of South Florida's drive players here. Absolutely. And joint, you know, returning is the guy, this gentleman in yellow, Herbs. Hola, como estas? <laughs> <laughs> and we got an empty seat because we're waiting for someone. Surprise special later. guest. Yeah, special yes. guest coming in shortly. <laughs> Creator. That's the one and only. <laughs> and joining us again, Beefy Manatee. Y'all know who I am. I'm coming back. I'm ready to talk about some strive. I'm excited. When did you leave? Oh, never. You know, I sleep on the I've been here the whole time. But Bro, I'm you back don't know? Now. I sleep in the floorboards for Flynn's. <laughs> oh, God. There's that, more, more lore to add. Into. Never, if you ever come into Flynn's, which you should, never remove the rug from the uh, console area because underneath you'll be fine in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of the podcast is going to be available on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Anchor. And all those other audio hosting platforms. And then, of course, video playback will be available for YouTube and Facebook later on. So, jumping right into it, we have the Strivecast, as I'm going to call it. Similar to the, you know, Smashcast, but this time it's with Guilty Gear Strive players. And before we dive into the topics or whatnot, um, I want to give like a brief, inter- I mean, give the our guests brief introductions of themselves and you know, the characters that they main in Guild Gear Strive. So we're going to start off with Herbs. Yo, what's up, everybody? My name's Herbs. I main bottom three Jacko. I love her. Oh, my God. I love her play style. I just love how she controls the neutral. And Buffer. That's pretty much it. <laughs> it's been the intro, bro. You already, got, you already dropped it. Buff Jacko in the intro. <laughs> You knew it was coming. You thought it was coming in the no end. no time at all. We're, we're setting the mood early, well, all right? Anyway, y'all. Yo, no what's up? My name is Brandon, um, otherwise known as Creator, uh, sponsored by Flynn's Gaming. Really happy to be part of the team. Um, I played Giovanna in Strive, as anybody who follows the game or follows the local scene knows. And, man, I'm just here chilling. You're trying to take part in this podcast. All right. be here. Man, I got to say something first before I introduce myself. You mentioned that, you know, it's similar to the Smashcast. For all those listening, just know it's the Smashcast, but better is what we're doing today. That's all <laughs> it is. <laughs> better players. Better neutral. Better fair players, very neutral. Better game. It's all, it's all here. Nah, I'm Beef Manti. <laughs> Gold Lewis player. I'm, I'm going through a Leo arc. Constant oh. character crisis. I'm ready to random play. I, I won't go, come to a tournament. <laughs> I'm going to come to, like, CEO or something, make it out pools, just hitting ramp select. I feel like that'd be pretty cool. But uh, we're making our way through the cast. Oh, yeah, definitely. And we'll wait for our other guests to, you know, finally come through or whatnot. But Bro, it's going to be like the last 15 minutes in. You're going to see him running through the door. He's going to be shirtless, sweating. You'll be like, where the heck were you? <laughs> we all know. He's got like a whole bunch of food for himself and stuff. I'm like, bro, bro. get out of here, dude. <laughs> it's bound to happen. Not even here to share. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and jump into the topics real quick. And our very first one, oh, where is it? All right, so we're going to start off with Herbs. What got you into Guilty Gear Strive? Uh, what got me into Guilty Gear Strive was Mortal Kombat 11 was my first competitive fighting game. That's why I learned, like, frame data and, like, learned from the ground up. And in order for me to improve, I went to my locals. I got really strong and... Then after that, I was craving for more after they stopped supporting the game. They left it in the disaster because they released it like customs. I'm like, I need another game. So that's when Guilty Gear with all the godlike promotions and all the the move, the mobility, it was just something brand new and I wanted to just branch out. And uh, yeah, I went into that. For some reason, I decided to learn Faust. That was like the worst decision I ever made in my life. <laughs> you can't say that when you're playing Jacko now. You're like, nah, Jacko's, better than Jacko's, Jacko's boss, 10 times That's better. I can agree. I literally, legit only got like one tournament win with like Faust, and those will wake up super. Then at, And I was one of those first to two, so I would have probably been like 0 and like 80 with that character. <laughs> and then after that, I went to Soul, which I was getting wins. I was doing decent with them. And then I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't like his play style. And then Jacko came out, and boom. I was struggling with it for a couple months. Thank God it stuck it out. I had the Flynn's to help me out with the strong people, and then boom, I just got better with her. Creator. Oh, okay, so we're going to meet. Um, <laughs> man, as far as Guilty Gear Strive, okay, so check this out. 
I am no stranger to Arxis games. Um, I actually also started with MK series, not MK11, but MK9 was my first game. Then I hopped onto Blaze Blue. Bro, Blaze Blue changed my life. That Same was here. like the game that I was like, man, anime fighting games are sick as hell. Um, then Dragon Ball Fighters dropped. That was obviously big for a lot of people. Got a lot of people back into the community. I didn't really like the netcode. I didn't really um, know how to function within the team system. You know, I prefer more one-on-one. That's what I'm used to. And so as soon as Guilty Gear Strive was, you know, getting ready to come out, I knew that Exerd was like a game that a lot of people, you know, liked. It had a niche community, like a really dedicated community. I couldn't bring myself to kind of like get into that back then. It was like definitely a little too hard for me by the point that I figured out that that game existed and that it was being played. And so I was just hoping and putting all my eggs in the basket of Guilty Gear Strive. And, you know, as soon as that hit that first beta with the rollback netcode, and I saw what the netcode was, it was a wrap. That's it. I can play this game actually online. That's crazy. Netcode's carrying games. I tell you, it's crazy. You know, honestly, a rollback, savior, savior of the FGC, especially the time when the uh, developers man. started figuring out that they actually invest into it. Because you got, you got games like uh, Street Fighter 6 from the corner. I hope it has a better rollback than Street Fighter 5. But myself getting into Guilt Gear, I've been a Guilt Gear fan for quite some time. I used to play it as a child on the PSP. I had this game, you can look it up. It's called Guilty Gear Judgment. It's like, I've it's, never heard of that. it's Guilty Gear XX with partnered with a uh, side-scrolling beat-em-up game. What? what? Yeah, so it was like a side-scrolling beat-em-up really? Guilty Gear game on the PSP. And I also had a Guilty Gear Plus R on the PSP. So like as a little like seven-year-old beefy manatee, a fat little child, I was playing that game on car rides. So a big fan of the series. And then kind of like when COVID hit is when I started like getting into the fighting game scene. Like I played fighting games before, but, but you know, didn't like, was in the FGC, so to speak. Not a deep dive, right? Exactly. I just, you know, played it a little bit. But then I was going into like... Uh, I was running tournaments for Dragon Ball. I was running tournaments for Street Fighter. And then, you know, 2021 hit, summer, betas came out. I just instantly fell in love with Guilty Gear Strive. The game's so cool. I gotta say, I was just thinking about the other day. I feel like I fall more and more in love with the game, like, every week. Every uh, week, bro. Like, it's not even that. It's not even just, like, the gameplay. Like, I love every single character. Like, when it comes to, like, lore stuff or, in, like, design, I feel like there's not a character I don't like. When it comes to gameplay, it's not, hey, he's coming on. He's walking in. Here's his appearance, the grand entrance <laughs> of the guest that you didn't know who he was. Yeah, who he is. Turbulent Blin Gaming. Turbium. <laughs> In Terbium. <laughs> it's Bert. A little late, but better late than never. Yeah, I had to <laughs> try to attempt to fix my AC. Yeah, your AC it can at fix. home or your AC in the car? AC at home. Oh, First, man. bro. Oh, oh you don't gosh. need that, bro. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> As a sweat lord, I agree. You don't need that. You just need to sweat more. <laughs> no, I, I, I sweat... Uh, Throughout the night. That's the the Yo, style. Am I allowed to say on the podcast that Daniel's told me one time um, that like he literally like he's in his most zen when he plays Guilty Gear in his underwear? <laughs> 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 what? He like completely dresses that like he can't have the weight of worldly like materials <laughs> on him when he's trying to heavenly buster someone, so he just undoes it. Bro, that's like going towards Nirvana. You think uh, yeah, Buddha would close? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I respect that. I'm going to have to try that one sometime. Coming yeah. out to Flynn's, I'll come out of my Speedo. Yeah, bro. That's when I'm going to actually get my first Flynn's win. I come out of Speedo wearing no clothes. You see me on stream, titties hanging out. Bro, dude. The most powerful. <laughs> That's confidence. That's confidence. <laughs> Yo, you'll throw it. your opponent off, too. Like, there's no <laughs> way. Hey, but don't say anything about it. They, they, but if they ask you anything, you just don't say You just, yeah, bro, let's play. Yeah, there's that. You can't look surprised or nothing. You just look <laughs> in your face, bro. Who is, I don't want to get the name wrong, but there's that Japanese player who takes his shirt off during, I think it's Punko. Uh, Isn't it Punko who Punko. does that? Punko, yeah. yeah takes his shirt off during tournaments. For, yeah. What? Yeah, Sometimes. during like tournaments, he'll take his shirt off. But there's one time, I think it was Evo for Street Fighter, if I'm not mistaken, where his opponent took his shirt off first, trying yeah, to get Punko to do it. Was it was like a funny little thing. And it's, then he got his ass beat. I, I mean, was like, you can't be calling him out about taking your own shirt off. Off, and then you're against the master. Of, the guy uh, definitely knew he was gonna get. You weren't joking. Like, slapped. It was definitely for content. It was for it was for the memes. Yeah. You you, the you memes. weren't joking. Oh my god. He yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. Punko takes his shirt off. Yeah. yeah that's not. It's Bro, that's the power up. And, and the crowd cheers for it. I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah, he does it when he's uh, angry. Yeah. Angry. 
Oh, that's the yeah. You're watching the and clip it, of the eye person. He puts his shirt on him. Yeah, we got it. that's the crazy. Disrespect. <laughs> Absolutely wild. Imagine putting your shirt on someone else. Anyways, Turbs, good to see you. No. What got you into Guilty Gear? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. We gotta give him the intro. As a matter of fact, I didn't even do the intro. So. I gave him the intro. God bro. damn it. <laughs> Flynn's Gaming. <laughs> okay, now we give to her his intro. Um, Who you are, and of course, your main in Guilty Gear. Oh, my uh, my username is uh, Turb, and my main is Potemkin. All right, and nice. what got you into Guilty Gear Strive? Um. I don't remember exactly, but I know I, I heard about it, and I played the second beta, and uh, I just loved that rollback hit different, right? <laughs> that rollback roll hit different, right? right? So you never you never played first beta Potemkin massacring everyone. Oh no. Oh, I feel bad for you. That was like one of the most fun characters in Guilty Gear Strive. Is beta one Potemkin? You got like. He got Mega Fist forward and he was like plus four on block or something. Anti airs did not work. <laughs> Anti airs so. did not work. Oh, yeah, 6P wasn't as good. It was a lot worse back then. It was um, a lot higher on the character where the uh, head and vol started. So you were able claps. to get deeper jump in. But before Easy you claps. can convert off 6Ps, like, like a, lot, a lot of damage, I don't know. Nah, I don't think so. I mean, it's it's, it's less yeah. combo before October. There's a lot less combos in Guilty or Strat. I was watching like beta play of the game Wait. the other day. Are you sure you're talking about the first beta? I thought they were like infinites in the first beta. Oh, Geo had infinite, yeah. yeah. Not with 6P though. But I will say, um, speaking of Guilty Gear Strive and betas and versions and stuff like that, it is crazy to think we are, if, if you're talking about the betas, the game has been playable for a year already. Yeah. yeah. So that's crazy. Um, Vanilla Strive is kind of disgusting when you go back and look at it oh, in God. the context of like post October patch. It's crazy that we even played that game. But now the game has continuously developed and stuff like that. And I think, um, save for some balance issues, it's in a pretty good spot. Save for some balance issues. I, man, bro, oh my God. <laughs> not to derail Senpai because I know it's not on the top of the list, but God damn, do I hate when Twitter people come out talking about happy chaos being broken. Which he's really strong, but they don't even know why it's broken. Like, if you ask any of these people, they haven't played against a high level happy chaos. And high level happy chaos is different than like medium level and low level happy chaos. Like, low level, if you're playing about like medium level happy chaos, you just can't handle zoning. That, that's not a happy chaos issue, that's a you issue. <laughs> Damn. I just think well, because the game is like, it's like so fast paced, you know what I'm saying? Like, characters like Jack or happy chaos is kind of forcing you to block. Like, don't get me wrong, the character is broken, I think. It's just, like you said, like an execution heavy that knows how to utilize their meter. Like, you're going to lose. There's nothing you can do. Especially when they like, they break the wall and then you're shooting, it's just infinite pressure full screens. Yeah, unless the happy chaos players you're playing are infinitely putting you in the guard break block stun, I don't want you to hear you complaining about the character. That's all I gotta say. I, I tell you, I feel like every day I go to Twitter.com and uh, someone else makes me want to pull my hair out and I don't got much of it left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love this game, by the way. I do. I love this game. I uh, hate the people I complain about, though. I'll, uh, I'll die, on the, die on hell for this game. <laughs> You say that because you picked up Leo now, bro. Is that the good life <laughs> oh, now? No. I tell you, Leo White thing? Bro. I, brain off, head empty, gorilla disrespect. I don't believe it, dude. Beefy picks a new character like every month or something. <laughs> yeah, I do. And then we always just end up back at Behemoth Typhoon. It's like, right? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm enjoying him, but I think uh, the reason I do is like I get to learn a little bit more about the game every single time. So That's true. like if I go back to Gold Lewis, like every single time I switch characters and I go back to Gold Lewis, like I have a little bit more information. A little more and, like, perspective. My, exactly. Because I think uh, I understand FD better now that I played Leo. Okay. So I, I utilize it my, my resources a bit better because of how it's used against the character. Hmm. And like one of the reasons I initially picked him up because I was just doing it, learning like for a week, just to understand him better, and then I actually ended up enjoying him, uh, was because like I don't, I understand Leo pressure before that like good Leo pressure like I, it just did not function with my brain well. So I was like, let me pick this up real quick, learn it in a week, and I was like, damn, this character's kind of fun. So I'm sticking with it for now. Like Brian said, I, I switch characters pretty often. I'm, I'm trying to be you know the random guy. Why not? But, uh, yeah, it's just I feel like you got to learn a little bit more about the game. Yeah, because I remember um, oh, um, in the beginning, like, when, you know, we had the tournament, like, outside and whatnot. I remember Beefy would – you start out with uh, Zotto. 
Oh it, my god. Oh, I, I, I was so Rosado. I was such a Doom Rosado. I gotta say, thank oh, God he's not playing that character. I would be miserable to be around if I was still playing Zado. <laughs> Bro, he's such a dumb player. Oh my god. He's good. He he's was good. a dumb player. I'd never forget. He'd be like, I just said. No, I before said. October patch, before yeah, October patch, Zado no was kind of whack. <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. Oh, no. Yeah, like, I, I've seen people go through so many different character changes. Herbs, you're, you're one of them too. <laughs> where you st you go off with this is just that you go with one character, okay, you get a couple of wins and then you start losing back. You're like, all right, you know what? This character's gar garbage. This character's trash. And then when you and then when the DLC came out for Gold Lewis, then I started seeing Beefy picking up Gold Lewis and then just getting really really good. Herbs was still going through a crisis at that time. Lewis and then Jacko fine. came out. <laughs> Herbs was still going through a crisis with Jacko. And then. Now herbs is doing really good. Yeah, bro, it was it was really difficult. It's just uh the one of the most important things with Jacko, you really need strong neutral. And one thing that I did was super autopilotly, like her servant kick is like negative on block, and you have to have strong neutral. And that's something I implemented, and it definitely helped me a lot. I think it's funny actually. We have on the table here. We have four players. Two of them who are sort of like. Have either either been in between characters before, or like we have like Beefy here who uh, switches characters habitually. You got two loyalists, Potemkin and Geo, baby, day one, bro, <laughs> unshakable. Is there is there any character? I I feel like Daniel. I know the jam. answer to that. Yeah, I was jam. gonna say. I was gonna say any character that jam. they had, and you actually switch off Geo's jam. It's jam. That's a good pick. Jam's pretty cool. But like, cause. I mean, I'm so predictable. Yeah. Uh, like, if it's a uh, like a female character, usually that like is fast and like hits hard, and like can schmooze and shit, mm -hmm. bro, I'm in there. And then for Daniel, I think he said he considered brief, not considered, but like he'd be down to mess around with a little bit of Slayer. But wait, because you said you're a loyalist and you're a loyalist. If Geo and Potemkin was in the game, who would you pick? Like in the current roster right now? If they weren't in the game? Yeah. Yeah, they got shot in the head. I'll let Daniel go first because I don't even know. <laughs> no. Probably Nago. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. I can picture him playing Nago. Gotta have a I'll be scared grab. to play Gotta turns have a Nago, bro. <laughs> be, Gotta have a command grab, bro. Yeah, you should be glad Tempest is in the game. Bro, oh, my bro. God. You be glad. I do not want to play turns <laughs> Nago, bro. Hell no, Me, bro. bro. You, get, you guys haven't seen Daniel's Faust yet? That's just crusty dog. There's no, there's no. <laughs> what? It's I don't know about doesn't that. Doesn't sound like that should exist in the first place. I don't know about yeah, that. I, I was playing foul smears with him. He was kind of shooting with it. I don't know what you're talking about. Bro. Oh my god. He's wiping off the face playing it. I'll get on stream one of these days. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> talk though, turn, other yeah. character from the current roster that I'll play. Um, I'm a tier whore, bro. I'll probably play Ram. Hey, Ram, bro. Oh, man. I probably just want to win. Damn. Nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. That's, that's actually Cap. Um, oh, Ram is actually too probably, boring. Um, if I had to pick a different character, like randomly, like right now, like Geo just get boop, blipped out of the existence from the game. Mm -hmm. I think. Don't I think I might go Dark Side and play Zotto. Oh. oh. Weird. Weird, right? But like, I think Zotto's actually really dope. Um, I was messing around with him re briefly recently. There's some, some casual matches, and I was like. Yeah, this character kind of slaps. That was cool. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Every time Frog messes up, made me want to pull my hair out. And the Frog way doesn't mess up, dog. Frog, Frog is like, the leap is up. like disgusting. That just get a free get enemy tool, and then you got mix up right after that. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Bro, how are you messing that move up? Like, <laughs> bro, every time Frog goes the other way. <gasps> Shut up, dude. You're trash. <laughs> All, All right. right. Let's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, All right. Let's dive into our next yeah, topic. I mean. Does it surprise you that Strive is the number one fighting game in the U.S. to the point it's main event for major tournaments? Not really. No, I think uh, I think Strive kind of came in the perfect spot with like a, a few different things. We talked about rollback a little bit, but also like it's a nice meeting point between like perception and like presentation, and that the presentation of the game is just beautiful. Soundtrack slaps, game's beautiful, and then because like the FGC like doomers came in and said strive is super easy game to pick up which I, I think is pretty easy game to pick up compared to you know other games you know i think people like oversell it it got more people willing to pick up the game because they're like oh this is a nice place to start you know with the series because usually like fgs i feel like have like the the perception that they're really difficult and hard to get into 
But uh, I, you didn't see that a lot with Stripe. You saw a lot of people uh, getting out of their comfort zones and, and trying out the game and ended up sticking with it. So, like, we even see a lot of, you know, Smash players come to the game now because yeah. of those two things, I think. Absolutely. Great are your thoughts? I think that Strive really came in a perfect storm. I think that the pandemic had people fiending, bro. Fiending. And, I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Like, you know, you got a situation where, like, it's a year and a half coming on two years of rarely any, if any at all, offline events, right? And you have the rollback situation going on. The game has impeccable, not impeccable, you know, rollback is rollback and any network connection can have its issues, but compared to a lot of other games, the rollback is golden. And I think there wasn't really any other game that was really competing with it, right? Like it just came. Yeah. And it just blew up and it looks dope. And everybody was like, that looks dope. And honestly, the game has mad haters, but if you're if you have haters, it means you're doing something right. Pretty much. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so um I think it's dope, man. I, the amount of people that it's true, like the amount of people that I've seen get into Strive as their first game is dope. It's dope. You have Smash players getting into it for the first time. I used to be a Smash player and look at me now. Um Reformed. Reformed. Um Reformed. <laughs> reformed, truly. <laughs> Um, I can actually play this game online. Smash players hold that L. <laughs> yeah. Forever, dog. Forever. That's like the worst part, right? Is if you're a Smash player, which is a huge community, and you were in COVID, right? What were you going to play? Guilty Gear seems like the next best thing. Yeah. Yeah. So Much better netcode than Smash. I think a lot of people, like Street Fighter is obviously like one of the biggest, like the GOATs. But Street Fighter V is on its way out. I think a lot of people had somewhat sour experiences with that game at its onset. It's better now. But at this point, I know a lot of people like Water 1, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, he himself, he likes Street Fighter V, but he himself feels like he can't get into it at this point fully. Because, you know, the game's so far in its lifespan that it's like... Six years old? It's Yeah, like at this point, you're like, bro, I'm just waiting for Street Fighter VI. Yeah. So I think that Guilty Gear occupies a really good, I guess, uh, role in the community at this point. Once Street Fighter comes out, I think that'll take over, but I don't think Strive will go any less than like top three in terms of like attendance. Gotcha. Terp? Yeah, definitely um, agree with a lot of that. And uh, it just came at such a, a good period of time, just a year after COVID and everyone's just, well, it, and it was a like a more beginner friendly uh, game with not like too too hard of execution, although later on, or there definitely is some execution in the game for sure. The October patch, I believe in Daisuke's vision. It's gonna get more execution here. I don't patch. know, bro. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. Ooh, um, we got doomers in the chat. No, but um, <laughs> doomers amongst us. It, it just came at a really good time, and um, and it just it turned out really well with the the good net code and just the just the whole fighting game like. Uh, Fan base, or even like new players, like just hungry for uh, like a good experience. With it's also fighting. just really good looking. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, like it's just that that in and of itself sells. Like, I think people underestimate how much like, man, that shit looks cool. How much that concept just sells something to you. It's like, that shit looks cool. That's yeah. it. That's all you really need to get somebody like, yeah, damn, I, I wonder. I feel like they also uh, like advertise it pretty well too. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll pretty much say the same thing. It's just a net code. I think it's by far one of the best net codes, my personal opinion. And like everybody said, it was just a really beautiful game, especially how they implemented the new characters and how they promoted like Nago. That character looked like so OD. And the character variety, like day one, like I think it had a pretty strong roster and the amount of creativity in the game has just been phenomenal. Um, yeah, because I've seen Faust. He was pretty creative. It was like trailer, even though they nerfed a lot of his stuff, but... Yeah, just the net code, the creativity. It's a uh, beginner friendly, and yeah, you can like kind of express yourself with the. Uh, Cause I never played the older Guilty Gears, but like the whole Roman cancel feature is really cool, and I think it's still underdeveloped to this day. So yeah, year in. And also, they're bringing crossplay too. Like that's freaking crazy. That's like all I want, and I'm like, dude, that's amazing. Cause I like to host like online tournaments, and we can actually see like give these opportunities. Cause there's only like PC tournaments now, but there's like no more excuses. So. 
they're they're looking at a step in the right direction with the guy like connection. Hopefully they fix the lobby system. That thing is super butt, but yeah, I guess, <laughs> that, that I guess was, you can't that, have everything perfect, but it is. Yeah, I I I really hate the lobby Pros system. Cons, intro. Bro. Why all anime games have that? Like in Mortal Kombat, you just send like an invite code, King of the Hill, boom, that's yeah, it. exactly. Like with Strive, is just you make your own character. You have to wander jump around. around. Just like no, just put me in a damn. Can I play Pop Tropica before you get to play some Strive? Exactly, and then, <laughs> like, on guard, homie. <laughs> and then you get to a station. And I was like, oh, you can't connect, and I'm just like. Why not? And then you, you do match like 20 times, and then eventually you connect, and you're like, thank God. I rage yeah. match. I'm just like. I, right, I'm the same thing. I, I'm I, like, I just go to like another station. <laughs> nah, 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 I'm just like. Nah, I'm like, this is the one. Daisuke, this is the station I want. <laughs> so help me. Yeah. This is mine. For real. It's funny, like, seeing somebody get, like, tilted. I don't know if you see, like, a tournament, and they just leave, and then they just go out the door, or whatever. Like, it's so funny, bro. They just, like, they just walk out. Speaking I'm, of. Oh, no, go ahead, Dirk. Oh, no, you know they're extra mad when you just. They just blip out of the game. <laughs> 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 they hate control all the time. Oh, oh, yeah. They're just like, all right, I'm going to head out. Yeah, well, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> that could easily happen in this game. You could get, like, one touch. Oh, my God, bro. Speaking of other games, too, I wanted to ask um, yeah. Herbs, actually. So you played rollback with MK11 because MK11 had rollback. How does the rollback in that game compare to Guilty Gear Strive rollback considering that... Um, MKF came out. MKX came out before, and I'm pretty sure that NRS was already using rollback for MKX towards the end of its lifespan. So they had yeah. a good amount of time working on it. How would you compare it? Oh, it's definitely day and night difference. You know what I mean? The really? crazy thing they do implement MK that has as cool as like that. Uh, the they determine who's on like Wi-Fi and stuff. And I think Guilty Gear is so god like an indicator. Yeah, indicator. Yeah. So pretty much like in Guilty Gear, I'm pretty sure like probably 80 percent of the community is probably still on Wi-Fi, but it's still OD the connection. <sighs> You know what I mean? I barely have any issues where there's, like, a bad connection, unless they're playing from, like, Japan or something. But still, it's still pretty playable. Like, I played people like that. So, to answer your question, the connection is just unbelievable. And then hopefully all these other games follow in the same footsteps and boom. So, you think that Strive connection is better than MK11? A hundred times better. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, can, I can agree with this. Game. Yeah, same A hundred times better. Way better. Uh, it's literally day and night, bro. Like, even if you're, because the thing is, they'll be wiring everything. It's just, it's just crazy. Like, I just feel like I'm playing offline when I'm playing on Strive, especially on PC. Goes to show that um, not all rollback is created equal. There yeah. is still, like, you still have to have good rollback. I mean, I oh, think Melty is a good I case of this, say, right? Melty Plug released <laughs> with rollback, and it came out. So I, I feel like it's gotten better, right? I heard it's gotten better. I don't Probably. play the game anymore, but it really soured my mood and wanted to, like, learn that game when right. I found out the internet doesn't work. Right, right, right. Where it's and like then, it's rollback, and then it's still unplayable. Our system has been on point with the two. Like, have any of you played the Blaze Blue rollback? Like, I have. It's on, pretty clean. Yeah, it's PC. clean, man. Yeah. It, the, yeah. Bro, the rollback is in peck. It, like, plus R, Guilty Gear Strive, Blaze Blue Central Fiction, Skullgirls, and, and Blaze need, Blue Cross Tag. Yeah, Blaze, Cross I haven't tried that one. I know it just came um, to the PS4 recently. Those five it, games right now have the best netcode. Period. And I think um, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax also has on rollback net code. No, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, okay. Oh, it doesn't. That is a huge <laughs> issue, man. The whole thing is basically like Persona 4 Arena Ultimax is was re-released already. It already came out. And then what they did was they're like, okay, we're going to release the game with no rollback. And then in the summer, we'll look into adding rollback into it. Well, it's coming. It's announced that they're making it. They, uh, they I don't know why would they do that, though. Why don't they just wait till the rollback? Exactly. Because initially, know, they man. didn't want to make rollback, I bet. Initially, they didn't want to do it, and then they got a, a bunch lot of, of, a got bunch lot of outrage. Pushback. A lot of pushback. And they're like, all right, well, we're still stick with our release date, which I understand as far as like being a company. You probably have to stick with your release date, but they should have just done it from the start. I'm glad they they made the decision to change their mind and uh, give it rollback in the future. But hopefully, this is a, a lesson to developers out there making their own games, like just release with rollback. It literally oh, makes crossed. your game release <laughs> with such good publicity. Like it just helps your game in every single way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, content creators are gonna cover any game that has rollback. Yeah, yeah. Sage, you know he's gonna go out there and be like, God, this game has rollback. I want it. <laughs> I'm, I'm making five episodes. Rollback here, bro. Yeah, so it, it literally just gives your game good publicity from the start. So it's so nice if you you're able to uh, implement it in. And I, uh, it shouldn't be hard. Uh, I don't know anything about game development. Gonna admit, pretty dumb in that regard. But GGPO exists, and I know it's an open source resource that all developers can use to add rollback to their games. So. Leave, the, leave it to the smart people. They got this. Exactly. But if there's an open source <laughs> tool that's literally free to use called GGPO to add rollback to your game. 
yeah. and figure it out. You don't need to be on with delay based. Oh, I think yeah. it's funny because we're already talking technically about the next topic, which is the. Uh, you know. What are some things you see Strive do that other fighting games need to do? <laughs> netcode, get that netcode on point, first of all. <laughs> but there is other stuff. Um, and y'all want to go? There you go. All right. You starting yeah, off. Sorry, so go for it, bro. Nah, bro. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I have a lot of thoughts. I, I'm a very opinionated, opinionated individual. What? What are some things that Strive does that other fighting games need to do? Aside from, like, that netcode aspect, I think that other games need to focus on, like I said, they need to focus on looking and feeling cool. Yeah. That is utmost. That is just, like, you got to have banger music. You got to have... Really good, like, I don't think it's, like, graphics. Like, graphics itself, but, like, art direction. Like, you have to have yeah. really good style. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Like, for me, um, that will sell a game off rip. That's my honest opinion. A lot of people, like, saw Guilty Gear Strive. They thought it looked dope, and they bought it. Everything else, learning the game, how it works, all that stuff, that comes after. Trust yeah. me. So that's for one. Um... Past that, man, I don't know, because there, there's actually, I think that netcode is the biggest thing. That, that Netcode and appearances are the biggest things. I mean, just kind of talk about the appearance thing. That, I'm sorry, are you talking, Daniel? I want to hear Daniel. Huh? Who's talking? Is that herbs? No, you could. Go ahead. No, nah, but uh, um, like one of the things you mentioned about like appearances, I think this like conversation comes up in like the FGC like once every month is how to get more casuals into the game. For whatever reason, something blows up and then people are like, this is how you get casuals. And, and people always mention, you know, dumbing down the games. I think presentation is the biggest thing for that. If people think Facts. the game looks cool, they're going to play. And it. you can play it with your friends at the same level of not knowing shit. Yeah. And you look cool doing it, and you do like a cool super or whatever, then it's gonna get people into your game. And from there, they're like, oh man, they run tournament for this? Let me go watch this. I was coming home from a, on a plane from uh, Albany, New York. And the person I happened to sit next to didn't play Guilty Gear, but he was a big Guilty Gear watcher. So we ended up talking about Guilty Gear on the whole trip back home. Oh, that's cool. And I was, I was like, what are the chances? Fair care was Gold Lewis. So I was sitting over that's here like, crazy. let's go, right? <laughs> so, you know, I was, I was hooking up and talking about Gold Lewis. And we just we just talked about the game the whole time. Because he's like, yeah, man, you know, I, I like playing video games, but I'm not much of a fighting game guy. But Guilty Gear, it's, it's really cool to watch. So he's like, you know, I've been watching like Frosty Faustins. I watch CEO. I watch like online NLVC, a bunch of stuff. I told him about Flynn's, so hopefully he's watching us now. But, um, yeah, it was just crazy being able to play with someone, talking about a, a game that, you know, beforehand, Guilty Gear was such a niche title. I'm at a phase yeah. in my life where I no longer care if, like, my hobby has a billion, like, a bunch of people, like, playing. I'm cool with just, like, the people who, are, like, like, are in this table. who are, Like, those are the people who are playing. I'm cool with those people. Like, I don't need to get every single person on the earth into fighting games. Make the game look cool. Make it look fun. The rest will come, hopefully. I agree. For the I people agree. who are competitive, I agree. the people who have that blood, they're here. They know. They know where to go. Absolutely. Derb? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I know I like to, um, as long as they're like cool, like just chill people to play with, like I'm, I'm usually happy. I think matchmaking and stuff like that is something that, you know, these games need to work on too. I think that, I actually think, so I don't think that the celestial system is super well thought out and the lobby system needs work, but I actually do like the tower system as a concept, like putting people with other people of their level. Yeah. I think that it can be polished even more and I think it can be refined, but I think that giving people meaningful ways of playing with people at their level and giving them a sense of accomplishment, even from like the first, like even if they're at floor, first floor, like floor one, if you go from floor one to floor two, that should feel like an accomplishment. Yeah. If you go from floor two to three, four, five, six, that, that should feel like an accomplishment every time. And I know that for me, when I started the game, it did. I actually thought I was nice because I was at floor 10. <laughs> Sorely <laughs> mistake. <laughs> but like, the, like the first time you hit Celestial, man, I popped off. I popped off. I, I popped was so off. excited. Like it's it's such a good system, I think, on paper. But like you're saying, it needs it needs some polishing. There, there's some, yeah, like, some issues shootings. with it. You know, you could say that the obvious ones, you know, Celestial, 2 out, you know, 5 out of 2, where you have to win 5 before you lose 2. Uh, it's not a great system. There maybe you should be like a higher ring of Celestial or something. That'd be a cool way to implement with the current tower system that they already have. 
but the the idea of hitting this like higher echelon of players is so appealing and it's like the aesthetic to it too yeah. like you're making your way through hell the and deep, then the, the clouds yeah. go away they part and celestials <laughs> at the top and you, you get the butler dude come in like it's time for you to challenge the best warriors around around the world and you're like damn this is cool so it, it's it gives it a sense of gravity that's right? that's wholesome as fuck yeah. It's it's so it's so cool, but like now that I've come, you know, the game's been out for a year. I feel like you know, as far as like most of the player base, I'm at you know like a, a higher level than you know most people grinding ladder to the point where like it, it wears off, and that's why there needs to be something else for all levels of play. Yeah, you know, I, as yeah. I as I improve it, you know, the it's diminishing returns. Yeah, is what I would say. That's a good way of putting it. And for our lab monsters here, well, lab monster singular. <laughs> One thing that not Guilty Gear Strive, but Guilty Gear um, Plus R, have you seen the rollback? I mean, the replay takeover uh, feature? Yeah. That needs to be like in every fighting game ever. It's so nice. Oh yeah. my God. I, I, it's just, they don't, I don't know, because Mortal Kombat a replay a system as well, too, which is God like, I love it. And if you guys don't, you have, like, if you want to prove it in a fighting game, like, you have to watch your replays, because you'll be surprised on the amount of bad habits you had. Like, me, I had like an extreme bad backdashing habit and like you just uh you can see a lot so definitely watch your replays so um what but, was I going with this what but, you said? i'm tripping but the there's plus a difference between being able to watch a replay and plus r you can take control of the replay and kind of like press resume for like let's say you got mixed right yeah you press play and like you press take over so like you take over the let's say you're playing jacko you take over the game from that moment, it just keeps doing all the same like things that the opponent did, but you can choose different options. Oh, wow. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. It's like you could take over wow. a replay and so replay yourself, the situation. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, instead of having to record the string and the timing and the whatever. That thing really annoys me, though, because I don't have to do no behemoth typhoons on a hitbox, but yeah. <laughs> exactly, though. <laughs> That's the point. If you have a replay of yourself playing against you know, Marshall, for example, you wouldn't have to do that. You would just hit, okay, I want to take over the replay at this point and then try your different options and see what works at what points. Godlike feature needs to be in literally every fighting game soon please that feature is too goaded it's crazy because i think arxis comes up with like the best features but decides to only put one of them in each of their games. Well, you got to remember that for plus r the well, people a fan who, base right it was a fan made thing that i think arxis like took them in and let them like you know do it and stuff like that and and publish it but um they just need to gain that inspiration and put that stuff into other games. I think they're games. definitely going to do it because they're putting, like, baby steps on what they're doing. Because what they have, that figure mode or whatever? Yeah, crossplay is huge. Yeah, that. You mentioned yeah. it earlier. Crossplay is huge. I think that's going to make a huge difference. There's so many times I just don't want to boot up my console, bro. Please don't make me boot up my PS4. <laughs> <laughs> it is a big, big like, difference, Everybody though, here's bro. guilty of it, right? They're like, I don't want to boot up my PS4, dog. Like, I got my PC here. Um, are you just playing PC? I don't got a PC. That's crazy. Damn. Tough. <laughs> no, but uh, crossplay is big. Uh, a feature I'd like to see. I feel like they swept this under the rug. When Guilty Gear Strive was first announced, there's supposed to be like the team battle. Do you remember that? In the I trailers? don't. Oh, I yeah, remember like, waiting for arcade. If I you, if you remember, it. it was it was there wasn't much information on it, but they showed like a split part of the trailer and they put a name to it, which I, I can't remember. But the what I got from it and what they kind of I guess showed or alluded to was this kind of like um Tekken cross Street Fighter, Street Fighter cross Tekken, if you remember that, where you could have yeah. two players on one side of the field, two players on the other side. Yeah, that's you crazy. Guys beat each other's ass. That's crazy. And it was supposed to be a PlayStation, it was supposed to be a console exclusive, like pre order oh bonus. Oh my god. Initially, it it never came to fruition it's the reason i i initially pre-ordered it on console to get that feature and then it came out i was like wait a minute it's not here so i'm i'm holding out fingers crossed that it still comes but i feel like it'd be godlike it would be complete chaos i feel like you dreamed that shit up i don't remember that shit at all bro i'm telling you <laughs> after <laughs> this after this we're gonna go search hey Walla, would you look it up say look, less look up. yeah look it up i, mean, I never knew look that. up uh mm -hmm. good to your strive like team, team battle battles. or something yeah it's uh, I that just gives me thing. a headache just thinking about that'd it, bro. So, that'd be so bro. toxic. Yeah, just imagine like happy chaos. This? Gold oh D my and God. May, Gold bro. Gold Lewis in front, happy chaos in the back. Absolutely <laughs> wild. <laughs> in the front. Oh no! Call the assist. <laughs> bro, he pulls out the Gatling gun too. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's crazy, bro. You're yeah, your team gun. That's crazy. I mean, oh, definitely. Man. 
I mean, one thing I do like about Guilty Gear Strive is that um, for those who are like newcomers <laughs> that are that are fresh in, that are um, fresh into the game, it's like there's real. <laughs> it's, wait, it's real. PS5 is the mood cut. Oh yeah, guys, yo, we have the. Oh uh, my god. The <laughs> There was indeed a PS5 exclusive mode cut from Guilty Gear due to post-COVID work restrictions. Oh my god. And then Arxis is looking to add it still post-launch, but yeah, it seems to have been like a team mode, like a tag sort of mode where you could play oh my god. with multiple people. You see Kai, exclusive. Soul, Nago. That's three characters on the screen. That's crazy, once. dog. That's crazy. I would, if Scribe if, was a team game, I'm a high damage myself. game, bro. If it was double, bro. Like, well, and they could do it like, like they could do it like Skullgirls, where Skullgirls gives you like if you pick more characters, they make those characters weaker, but you have you know the wall breaks won't be the same. <laughs> no, no. but I would hope. What if they make it like King of Fighter <laughs> a little bit? You have to pick three characters though. Nah, I would I, hope booty. though. I would hope though. Like I want, I don't know. I want like a casual playing game experience. Cause I thought Street Fighter Cross Tech. If you never played it, the, the yeah, the, I played it. The the mode where you can have it'd be like me and creator versus you know Daniel and Herbs, and we're all playing on the screen at the same time. It's no competitive integrity, but it is the most fun shit ever. Like it's such a fun casual mode to play with your friends, dope. where you just you're all in it and you're just all on the screen at one time beating each other's ass. And it's uh that would know. be one hell of a different matchup if y'all two against y'all two. It's just like that'd be fucking weird. Nobody would be the same. I'd fuck them up regardless. <laughs> that's that's the energy I'm here for, Brand. Free? Yo, Potemkin, Double free. Potemkin Buster Assist. <laughs> Buster, bro. No way. Bro, I would, Potemkin I, Buster I, Assist, Skullgirl style, where you can just pick any button as your assist, like any move. Oh my god. Oh my god. Back Mega Fist Assist. Me and Herbs, Ram and Jocko. <laughs> Absolutely wild. But yeah, back to what I was um, saying, that <laughs> one of the things I do like about Gizzy Gear Strive, that for, you know, if you're new to the game, there's like so many options to learn so many different things, like all the um, different um, features that it has, especially with like certain characters, and then of course, learning the game. Like if you don't know how to, you know, do any of the RCs, it teaches you what to do with the RCs or whatnot. It teaches you when to pun how to punish certain things and whatnot. Like, there's so many viable options that the game provides for newcomers. It's like, if you're new to the game, just try to do these moves. And then, of course, if you do it like 10 times successfully, hey, you're getting a reward for something. You know, it's a feature I've been thinking about, just brainstorming in my head about how to make the game better and stuff like that. You know how, like, you guys know how you play online and strive, and like, it'll give you kind of like a stat board. Mm hmm. Yeah. You guys yeah. know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that one thing that would be really smart is if, like, let's say you're, like, you know, like, one of the stats. Because, like, the, the game's obviously, like, tracking what you're doing and, like, how often you're doing RC, how often you're blocking, how often you're instant blocking, how often you're using FD, how often you're anti-earing, how often you're blocking burst, all that stuff, right? So my idea was if someone is, like, clearly deficient in a particular match or set, in like let's say a particular mechanic then on the post-match screen it could like kind of recommend people missions to do that yeah. would correlate it's like Ooh. this is this is why you kind of like this is why you maybe lost a little bit or these are skills that you could brush up on a little bit these are directly where we're going to direct you to like go ahead and practice those skills because i think that most people when they play if they're still learning um, the biggest issue is that they don't know where to start. Yeah. You need somewhere to start. So if you'd be like, hey, you didn't really RC at all that game. Do you Are you comfortable with Roman Cancel? Like, do you know how to do it? Here's the missions that I'll show you exactly how to do it. Um, I think that would be a really good feature just to direct the player to the skills that they need to, like, round out their skill set after a match because they're clearly tracking that information. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's really 100%. cool idea. Oh, my God. I like that. Because yeah. I, think, I think ranks is not the place to improve. Yeah. People are crazy on ranks. People be going You one of them, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no. I am a ranked monster. I'm a, I'm a crazy ass Tower player. demon. I can't play towers. I don't I think that's a waste of time, my personal opinion. I, I think it's I think it's good if you're going there for a particular reason. Like yeah. honestly, if you're looking to improve your defense and like adapt, tower is fucking pretty it's pretty good. I think it's good. I think it's good for a couple of reasons. It's just about how you look at it, right? Think about this. You want to practice any tech, you don't have to see the games in Tower as having any sort of competitive value, but you want to practice tech against actual opponents, you got to go on Tower, man. 
-hmm. And there's no stakes, right? You just like, I'm going to practice this tech. I'm going to see how often it works. It, does it, you know, does it work against like the crazy mashers? Oh no. Okay. Like, does it work against this guy? Okay. If it doesn't work against the crazy mashers, what's the RPS there? Like, how do I actually change, you know, adapt my tech to add a layer where it beats the mashing from these crazy celestial people or whatnot? Mm -hmm. I think all of that is actually just based on how you, you know, how you look at it when you decide to go play tower. I don't think it's the greatest use of time, but if you're practicing like new tech, I think it's spectacular. If you're trying to just practice skills that are like, I'm going to focus on anti-airing more. I'm going to focus on blocking more. I'm going to focus on trying this new tech or, you know, getting this new mix or this new setup. Those are all things that can be tested and practiced regardless of who the person in front of you is. And also, it could also be just because uh, I, I don't like using the, the quick match mode. Like, I don't use it ever. I don't use it ever. Yeah, I just go just, like, with my avatar and just, like, walk around and, like, see who's playing. Tower definitely isn't the main way to, to play, though. Well, I think your guys' points there is a really good advanced level perspective on, like, what, how to use, like, tower and rank system to improve upon things, like you're saying. Like, there's things you can improve upon that you know, like, oh, man, my anti has been off let me work on them so you go in the tower but i think like as a new player as like a new player to the genre or to the game it can be hard to know like which direction to go to i think that's why your idea is really cool because like you don't always if you're just grinding ranks and you're in a void you're in montana you know there ain't no locals in montana i'm calling you out mm. like Damn. you got you gotta run ranked and like there's there's no other players in your region that talk to about the game or like what steps to take to improve like sometimes it's like you know being your head against the wall or like you hear about like you know a thousand monkeys on typewriter eventually make shakespeare that's how it can feel like if you're just no feedback just grinding ranked yeah you know what i mean hmm. i get what you mean the feedback is important i like talking to someone when i'm playing because i like to get an idea of what's going on and what i'm struggling with so i understand that part for sure yeah there's a lot of places to actually like listen to like there's a lot of guides out there but there's not really uh a lot of formats where you can get like in instant feedback like, feedback like that yeah, I mean, offline hits different, bro. It's Always, true. forever. Yeah. Amen to that. And, and Discords are good for that. You anybody know? who sa I'm sorry, anybody who says, for the record, that like offline scenes are dying or that they're not efficient or not they're ideal dumb. anymore, suck a dick, bro. <laughs> call, call them out, Brian. I agree. Call them out. So suck extra. They said online's the future. I'm like, bro, what are y'all talking about? Bro, bro? Yeah, the same people saying stroke. online the future or the same people that were and like, you know, TO, online's like, not real. I don't think you're a TO saying Yo, Daniel, like that, they bro. say online is the future until they play <laughs> Yada West Coast 44 only. Oh my bro. God, bro. Call them out. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god, you just hit a nerve for me, Brandon. Damn that guy. That is the most laggiest Leo player I have ever played. I I think it's the most mad I've ever been after a tournament. Impossible set. condition. Was too, getting bro. was getting a fucking rollback DP twelve times in a row by that player. He's an East Coast player, I'm pretty sure. Why is he taking to this West nah, Coast nah, servers? He's West Coast, he's yeah, West, Coast. West Coast. I don't know. Cause I, I was looking at Smash G. His Smash G says he's from like New England or some shit. I don't know, bro. No. What? That connection is buns. Oh my god, I don't want to call people out specifically, but I'm calling that person out specifically. Yeah. You need to, you need to find a router or something. <laughs> I don't think it's, I don't, I think that East Coast to West Coast is just tough. It's not actually, I don't actually think it's Yada's fault. I um, play with West Coast players, they ain't like Yada. <laughs> it's not reliable. It can be done, but it's not, Who it's knows, not it's guaranteed to be Wi -Fi. reliable. No, 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 not even. We done <laughs> connection tests. It's just yeah. that sometimes coast to coast is just not viable. And the thing is, tournament organizers. And uh, I know that TOing is is tough work, senpai. I don't want to undersell it here or you know act higher than or holier than thou. But um, I, I think that say, say I think TOs say. need to <laughs> understand their limitations to run a good event. Because if you know, for example, you know you know, let's say you have a hundred people capacity here, you're not gonna run a tournament for one hundred people because you know that's your limitation. Same concept. If a TO knows, you know this isn't really super duper reliable. Let's keep it. East Coast or West Coast? Yeah, you want to at least cap it or, you know, like put a limit on it so that way, you know, you don't overwork yourself. You're and guaranteeing of guaranteeing a good experience for yeah. yourself, for your mods, for the your players. players. Yeah, everyone. And that helps your event grow. So I think that with that being said, you know, like I said, rollback is still something that has errors. Uh, as a TO, you need to know what the limits are and be like, hey, we can't do this coast to coast stuff. It's not reliable. It's not a good experience. And the uh, more that we make things a good experience, the more people who are maybe trying out tournaments for the first time can be like, you know what? That was actually good. Because if your first experience is like 
damn, I went 0-2. Um, I played against like a rollback five, you know, Leo player, and then I died to like Ramethal. But the thing I'm, is, I'm done. But my question is, why don't would you like report then? Let the TO do the duty there. You know what I mean? Because dude, because a lot of times the way it boils down is like this, right? It's like you prove that you both have an Ethernet connection, and then ultimately it's like the internet prove like they prove that their internet is good, and you prove that your internet is good. There's nothing that can be done. Yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah. just like a. I'm. It's just. It is what it is at that point. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's weird because even like I'm pretty sure when I did like the the internet test with uh, Yada, it, like he has better internet than I do. Yeah, it, it it comes to the point where it's like, oh well, there's not really anything we can do. It's coast to coast. It's yeah. not like oh they were actually playing on Wi-Fi and then oh. they, you know they they you know whatever. In those cases, of course, it's like you know easy DQ, but it's not like that. So that's just that. Yeah, and one last thing I do want to touch on before we move on to our next topic is um I do and this is something I do want to see other fighting games start to implement that Guild Gear Strive really did well is um the combo recipe. Oh my god, that new oh, that, yeah, I, so I like cool. that feature a lot, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, if you're new to the game and you don't know how to, you know, pull off some of these crazy combos or whatnot, just find a combo recipe, you know, t- type it in, enter it, watch it, and then try to replicate it. And try to do it as many times as you can to the point where it's like, okay, you're proficient with it. And that's another mode that can be used in conjunction with the tracking thing that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Imagine you're playing, you play Nago, right? Nago and Biking. Okay, so suppose that you got like a particular hit, like let's say, I'm sorry. Let's say you got like Nago 2H a couple times in a match, mm-hmm. but you didn't really convert off of it. And the game knows that you didn't convert like yeah. well off of those, like you didn't convert optimally. They could show you, because um, on the combo recipe, it separates by what's the starter. Yeah. It's one of the, the filters. It could show you, hey, this is a good combo for a 2 H starter on counter hit. Oh. So you can do that. And it could be like, here, this is how you can optimize your combo. This is how you could do that. You know, like, I think that would be really dope. Pointing people in that direction without making them be like. Yo, I, I, think, uh, I think Tekken does that. Oh, yeah? I, I Tekken 7. That'd be dope. I think you can actually go into your replay and, uh, and you can enable something and it'll let you know, oh, you didn't do... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's the frame true. data. The frame data. Oh, yeah. frame data, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I know what you're yeah, talking it'll about. It'll show you like, oh, you could have done this punish, yeah, you could have done yeah, that you, punish. You didn't punish oh, yeah, this here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like you didn't like actually convert into combo, you just let them like fall. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think stuff like that to direct people to the... Um, Direct people to the path to getting better is maybe one of the more important things than actually simplifying. It's just giving people the resources with which to find it. I can't say it again. I mean, I can't, I will say it again. Fighting games are probably not for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And that's okay. That's yeah. okay. We don't need to have every single person playing like the people who care, the people who know. Are the people who know? Yeah. You don't even need to play like fighting games to enjoy it. Cause me, I don't know about you guys. I've been like a spectator for like over four years. My mentality was like really horrible because I hate losing. <laughs> and then after like four years, my friends telling me, he's like, bro, you have to go to your local, which I did for more to come at eleven. And that's why I met like a cool group of people, learning frame date and all that stuff. So it may take some time, you know. But I think if you definitely want to like have community, yeah, like a community, because like I brought people that never played a fighting game and they have like so much fun. Like, for example, four phase bun bringing his brother and his family. They're having the time of their life. They don't even know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And then slowly they can transition. Like, man, like buns, my brother's having too much fun. I want to learn, you know, so but yeah, I definitely like to see that more, like more people like showing out, even if they don't play fighting games. Yeah. Because I plan on bringing like some people that never seen or anything, but you'll definitely have a good time no matter what, like in an offline event. Because there's so much things to do. Yeah, even here on Saturdays where we have, um, it's just completely Smash, we'll have like a few guys like playing Strive and Dragon Ball Fighters or whatnot, like some of the Smash players playing other fighting games for the time being and whatnot. And I'm just like, yo, if you're playing Strive, you need to come out on Sundays. Hell yeah. Come out on Sundays, you're going to get- There's too much to do, bro. It's like legit, dude. You can literally get commented uh, XP, TO, like the sky's the limit when you come to your locals. Yeah, and I'm just like, yo, you come to Strive, you're gonna, you're gonna have, you're gonna be well taken care of, because yeah. you literally have, I think everyone has like, um, like all the character rosters in Guilty Gear Strive, everyone mains at least one of them or two of them. That's true, and very proficient with them. There's a, there's a good balance of archetypes. I thought it was interesting. I talked. I'm sorry, Marshall. Again? I'm gonna just interrupt you for a second. Go for it. Senpai, I never done this. Uh, 
podcasting that you do, I gotta hit the bathroom real quick, dog. Right, go, go, go. Oh my <laughs> god, this dude is scared. Yeah, me, bro. Man. I didn't, didn't want to. No, 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 no. You guys saw this coming out. Well, just, you, know, you can excuse yourself. We can keep going. No, this is bad. It's bringing me back to like elementary school vibes. You need to raise his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Senpai, can I uh, use the rest? I thought it was going to be something dramatic. Bro. I thought it was some bad news or something. I got For scared, real. bro. Yeah. I thought it was going to be some controversial stuff this time. That's uh, what I was thinking, too. Oh, thank now, God. Uh, thank well, God. I, was saying, I thought it was interesting that like th- th- there's five characters released in the first DLC, and three of them were zoning type archetypes. Yes. Jacko, Happy Chaos, and uh, Testament are all kind of, you know, from mid range to zoning type archetypes. And maybe it was something when the game came out, it was very rushdown based. So I think Strive is trying to look in adding those. And now we have a really balanced roster. It was, uh, I got, I got shot out Omni T, Tuesday Night Casuals Runner. Millia player now like on Soul or some shit. He, he no, he's on Ram, no, no. I don't know. We were playing on Tuesday, he was playing Soul. Oh. Hmm. He, he's feeling that. I feel it. I, any, any person in character crisis, you're, you're speaking to the, uh, the to like the the character crisis master yeah, and just, over here. Yeah. And you're talking about the different archetypes, but honestly, even like uh, those characters like Testament and uh, Jacko, like there is definitely levels where they have to like kind of zone or like be mid range, but. There's de- you can definitely play them like somewhat brushed down. Like, well, I mean, that's the thing about like, archetype, right? Like, even though that's your archetype, it doesn't mean you can't rush down. Like, Sim from Street Fighter Five is a really good example where the character is obviously, you know, it's it's Sim. You know, he's he's a zoner, mm-hmm. but um, he has some of the most potent mixes in the game mm-hmm. off his teleport mix off Fireball. So I think it's you can have an archetype and still have other elements that you pull from. Like, it's like a it's a spectrum. But you know even, what I mean? Even say more so. I mean, I have to see as time goes on. But I almost feel like Testament. Um, I mean, maybe just because I played Potemkin. Uh, I actually think uh, playing them like more zoner-ish or whatever is a big mistake. Yeah. Or whatever. Or I, I don't think you're playing the character optimally. I think the character really, really does well with like pressure and uh, and like uh, offense. I okay. think it's wild that Testament has a teleport. Without having to spend RC, and it's faster than Faust. Like whenever Testament teleports, I'm like, man, this is just Faust PRC. It, it's wild. The, the character is crazy. I did a long set with Miles and he, uh, yesterday and he kicked my ass. I don't, I don't know what to do just, against him just yet. Just wait until they uh, unlock more like PRC tech with that, or oh, even it's uh, be nasty. Nice. I play, oh no, I see people I play, trying to develop with that character. Yeah, I play against sure. Dab. I didn't know. Apparently, Testament can uh, teleport and then air dash, and that that's. I think that's a little crazy. That's sick. Because they definitely have a lot of tools to reset neutral, like you're saying, like the teleport. It's just, uh, they have to just play like that mid-range game and slightly rush down. But I think the most important thing is establishing the stain as quickly as possible with those insta air, like fireballs. Once you implement that, then that's where the character really shines. I think without stain is really difficult, but once that happens, then pretty good. I think the biggest issue is what you just said, though, Turb, is that Ramal is playing them. And if Ramal is playing the character, you know tech is gonna come out for it. Like that character's gonna get cracked open. Like Happy Chaos would not be the best character in the game if uh, Ramal didn't pick him up. I was all I'm saying. She cracked open the character to to the point where you know everyone else could run away with them. Hmm. And the crazy thing, there's probably still like dirty tech because the thing is, people are just doing like the zoning, which is kind of the, it is the optimal way to play him. But Happy Chaos has some disgusting mix too. You know what I mean? Like with the dust and like. Well, yeah, so you get him in the corner, you know, we have slump mix. Yeah, and you got the wall slump. Oh, that character is just crazy. It's like it's like you deal with the zoning obstacle course, and then if they want, they can rush you down, and your mind's like, well, what do you do? Yeah. yeah. I, it's like, how do you prep for this? <laughs> like, zoning is definitely a good, like, plan A kind of thing, and, like, if the person can't deal with it. But I think, um, yeah, definitely happy chaos is, like, you know, it's a good happy chaos or uh, chaos that knows what they're doing is if they actually know kind of their offense or not know like the slump uh, resets and uh, like all and that. And con- conversions, especially for that character, their convertibility of any straight hit is really strong just because of the way the uh, gun mechanic works for the character. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, cra- mm-hmm. crazy ass yeah. character. I'm, I'm excited to see where the game goes next patch, hopefully coming soon. Because we've been playing October patch for quite a bit. There's like a little bit of change. Like Happy Chaos got the new reticle. Um, during the biking patch, but it wasn't. It was a Why? real patch. Why? did they do that? I don't get oh it. Oh my god, it's so ugly. I tell you, that's kind. Of, that is the main reason I dropped the character. I'm gonna be honest. I hate that radical so much. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely the worst. 
<laughs> and that means that we can go ahead and segue to our next topic, and that is, what are some of the changes you would like to see in Strive? Who wants Ooh. to take that one? Some changes that you want to see in Strive. Well, yeah, I mean, I can start it off. There's a, I, I think we touched a lot of the changes I'd like. Mm-hmm. I think um, Ranked and Tower has some ways it could be improved upon. Um, I think the biggest thing, though, is, like, Arxis has some of the best, like, uh, additions, like, fighting game tools in some of their games, but they never all add them to a specific game. Frame data? Give it to Please me in training go. mode. Like, oh I, my God. I appreciate the guys who do Dust Loop. They, they, they're doing God's work when I can go over and log <laughs> in, but I would appreciate more if I never had to... You know, alt tab out of the game, go to dust loop to look up frame data real quick. It'd be nice if I could just go and train mode and do it. Yeah. Like, like those resources like dust loop are super helpful, but I feel like they shouldn't have to exist if the developers are, are doing what I feel like they should for the community, I guess, you know, in, in a way. Mm-hmm. Like that, that information should be readily available inside the game and you shouldn't have to use outside resources. Did they have that in the previous installments? Because I never played it. I don't know about the previous installments, but they had frame data in Dragon Ball Fighters and then Grand Blue. Fantasy Versus comes out where they get rid of frame data yes. and you have like a blue character or a red character or a neutral character and that's how you're supposed to figure it out with frame data. And like, drag, so it's like I'm saying like add the, the training mode and the frame data from Dragon Ball Fighters. From Plus R, add like the, the recipe like or the um, replay that Brandon talked about because it's one of the best mechanics ever. Well, like between the different games, is it the same like uh, team that works on like the games? Uh, from my understanding, I believe they have a red and blue team. Is how they're divided. Mm. So they have two uh, main teams working on their fighting games. Is my understanding of the company. Um, you know, that'd be something I guess to look in more. Mm-hmm. But there's, it's all from the same company. There's got to be some cross knowledge. Like you know what the other. But it can't be that doing, hard to simply right? implement that though. Right, and you know what the other developers are doing. And I think part of it is like when the game came out. Like if you ever do the tutorial, if you go back and do it, it doesn't tell you about RCs. RCs is like the yeah. Guilty Gear mechanic. Like, that's the shit right there. Like, there's <laughs> I, I was just versions. on tutorial for the hell of it, and I saw the same exact thing. There was no RCs. So I think when the game came out, they were trying to appeal to the new players in a way of not overloading them with information. But I think you can have the information there without overloading new players. You just need to have the information available, and those that will, those that are interested will find it. They'll, they'll go for it, yeah, although, and, and they'll look for it. Although nowadays, like, um, I mean, obviously... It's it's more convenient when it's in the game, but I mean I remember just literally just on on Twitter or whatever you just look at and you just find all the tech or whatever, yeah and just uh, and or you would watch like street uh, streamers or but, whatever and just see what they do and that's the thing like the community is doing it and I appreciate the community doing it but like the tech on Twitter is kind of like what I feel like the combo recipes were answered to right yeah. like they're just combo recipes but imagine if like you brought that to the next stage where you have like set playing stuff interaction yeah and but like I, I mean looking at it as like a, a developer like uh, it's like w- why spend like a lot of, like or any resources like to like in making that system work when it's kind of already like doing itself yeah, I get that. You know, it could be a lot of resources for... Yeah, uh, instead of, like, focusing on something else. Yeah. Like, I'm sure with the other games, like, uh, implementing uh, frame data, it was probably just, like, they were trying it out. Yeah. Forever. Like, seeing how uh, how it was. Just funny numbers, man. It can't be that hard. Bro, that's the most basic thing, though. Like, I will always... I will die. Some of the other things I won't die on the hill for. Frame data in my fun games, I will die on the hill for. Dude, I was crying for, like, a like when it, I'm like, where's the frame data? Because <laughs> I like to see the exact numbers, because I like to be... As I, accurate as possible. I don't think Dust Loop goaded though. I don't think yeah, Dust Loop gives you God, one yeah. hit frame data though, does it? Yeah, it does. It does? Yeah. I'm oh, just yeah. dumb. That, yeah. that shows I don't like yeah, it. You have to go to the tab for uh, full frame da- uh, data. See, I ended up. I just went off like oh, jump ins because I'm tired of getting like grabbed off a of jump in. That thing annoys me. Okay, well, that, that you just kind of have to. Uh, well, I, I think they don't have the frame data because it's always like it's kind of variable. That one's variable. Yeah, so depending like, on no, how. No, but MK, they, they had variable in. like hit advantage and stuff. Yeah, and Dragon Ball Fighters too. Because um, I love watching a friend, like, when I'm watching a live match and then I have, like, everything so I can, like, go down to science. What button do I need to press in that situation? Like, if it's, like, 24 recovery frames, I want to do this button, all that good stuff. I, I will say Mortal Kombat, I think, gives information to players in a very digestible way. Like, you can go into the um, pause menu in your command list and you can look at your different strings and it will tell you, oh, this string ends in the overhead 
and it's, you know, it's minus four. Fog gap, yeah. Right? Like, it's minus four. Like, it gives you information in such an easy, digestible way that you can just go to command list, look at what it's all about, and then you can start figuring out the, the character from there. I think they, the NetherRealm Studios does a very good job with that. Yeah, I think they had, honestly, the best, like, tutorial mode ever for MK11. Really simple, easy to get into, and then... It's good. They even show you frame date and everything is nuts, bro. That's true. Creator, we were talking about um, what are some of the things that you'd like to see changed in Guilty Gear Strive? What are some changes you would like to see in Strive? Talked about some of my little brainstorm crackpot theories or things that I would like to see. But um, in the more practical sense, I want to see balance be addressed a little bit for the toppest of top tiers obviously i think that the game is actually very balanced compared to other fighting games that i've seen in the past if you really look at like a top eight bracket for like a major or like even like a big online event it's usually very varied i can't complain even with like characters like ramathal and happy chaos you usually see like happy chaos and then like zotto and then like geo soul leo um like Kai, like you'll see like at least six out of the eight top eight players have a different character. And that's dope. That's really, really dope. Yeah. Most ca most games are like they got the two top ones and then they got like a third character that like sort of can deal with those and that like, you know, like it's not as much. I think they go to Gears Drive is very good in that regard, but it does still need to get touched in terms of some balancing. And then lastly, just more options, you know, like um I want to see, obviously, like in the same way that the October patch added things like air gatlings and stuff like that, I want to see even more stuff get added. Um, I would love to see things like 25% meter options or um, like, <laughs> yeah, bro, give me EX moves. I don't, I don't bro, know. Give me, <laughs> give me, <laughs> give me, good. Give me oh cool stuff. I, I don't know, man. Just give me cool stuff. <laughs> EX <laughs> behemoth typhoon? I'm here for it. I'm here for it, right? Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just think that as long as they keep adding fun stuff to the game, it'll be great. Yeah. Especially the fact that it's going to, like, the next patch is going to be a season change. So that's obviously an opportunity to make sweeping changes. Yeah, they're buffing top five. I'm telling y'all, bro. Bro, please don't do I it. I promise you, dude. And that's the thing, like, I, like you were saying, kind of about the balance. I, I think it's in a really good spot right now. I'd like the, the top tiers to be touched up one. And then the, the lower tiers to be brought up. Like, I want to see a lot of people significantly lowered in their power level. I kind of like the, the power of the top tiers, in a way, on where they're at. Like, you know, maybe one For, ring down, and then the low tiers are, like, brought three rings up. And then they be in the middle somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I think that it just requires, at least for, I think, Ram and Happy Chaos are the two characters that are huge, huge, huge offenders for me personally. Um, just because of the way that they play the game compared to everybody else. They're super boring, too, like fundamentally they're not even like cool characters to watch or play i think they're just really boring they got like one dimensional game plans but they're so strong that it works and they remove mechanics from the game you know what i mean you have brainless burst save combos yeah they're just yeah, like when do you burst against happy kids the only time you can't even use the only time you if you're against the corner with them but that's like the only time that's, he has two bursts pretty, pretty much if you think about it yeah, gold burst yeah, having burst saves oh my God. Is, is really good and uh as well as just a lot of the characters, like especially like top end, like usually the the matchup spread is just uh, is is not is well. I don't think it's fair when like they have so many <laughs> either good matchups or so many like even matchups. Whereas like a lot of the cast, they will have like pretty, at least a couple. Yeah, pretty yeah. bad matchups or some like uh, not so great matchups. Which is normal. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna happen it's when you normal. have uh, yeah, different well, archetypes in the game. Yeah. But even not for you. I think it's healthy. Yeah. Absolutely. When you have characters that are just like. Uh, maybe they ha have some couple bad matchups or like evenish matchups, but like the rest of the matchups are like just they're they're just good at like they if not have like advantage in them. Um, it it definitely it, it definitely creates a divide. Yo, I'm so hyped for that Flanagan's. We got Guilty thinking. Gear on the mind, man. <laughs> Guilty Gear is food for the soul. It's all about strive. My stomach is empty, dog. <laughs> bro, 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 don't bring up food, bro. Come on. <laughs> Yo, we're going to Flanagan's. Oh, you weren't here. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're not invited. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're definitely invited. You should oh, come. I do want to ask you guys um, this one question, though. Do you guys think, 
to bring new people in that Guilty Gear Strive needs to adopt like an auto combo system for no. new players. Oh, no. Oh God, no! Please, no. I dropped no. the game. No. Great. No. No. Oh, no. Hell no. <laughs> no. No. Oh, hell no. 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 <laughs> no. Like, like com- a lot of combos with some of the characters like already do a decent amount of damage even with like pretty low execution. So right. I, I don't don't think that's necessary. Um, if you picked up your PS4 controller right now, you boot up Guilty Gear Strive. I'm gonna tell you what to do. <laughs> You get really close to the opponent. You press eight. You got a PS4 controller. You press triangle. And then I want you to do. I want you to press triangle again. And after that, crazy maneuver. You're gonna press circle. And you're gonna do close slash, far slash, heavy slash. And then I just want you to learn one special move. Throw it in there in the end after the heavy move. You're good, bro. That's a combo. But who's the character? Is the real question. It doesn't matter. Every character. That works for every single character, bro. Like the one character would be like Happy Chaos because he got like a weird circle button. So that's like 99% I mean, of the cast. If, if you're new and playing Happy Chaos, you know what you're getting into. Like no, you don't. That's no. the issue. Well, you're gonna be. You're okay, gonna come no. in and be like, man, Happy no, you, Chaos is a weak character. No, no, I can't block no, no, him. I have my gun out. This character is well, bad. Well, you, first, you're, first you're match you go into. New players not blocking anyways, bro. That's true. Yeah, but first match you go into and you like. They, pre- they finally press the gun button. They're, they're like, oh, shit, what the... What, what's why, why is it shooting? Why is it shooting when I press the button? Yeah, then they're like, okay. You, either th- they'll go in and do more research and try to find out like more about the character, or they'll switch character. Auto combos are trash, bro. Trash. I hate auto combos. That's and what I, I'm playing. Most I don't think they help people. anybody. Like, I've <laughs> yeah, never, that's what I'm saying. Like, I've what never, is the purpose of it? I've never seen like a person <laughs> who's like new at fighting is like, oh, my God, I'm so glad this game has auto combos. I like, don't think we've heard anybody say this. I press square five times in a row. I'm OD. By the time that you like have been playing the game for like two days, you're like, oh, this combo sucks. Yeah, but, because when you play against people online and you see them doing a whole completely different combo, like, how do they do that? Well, they're not using auto combo. Yeah. And automatically, you're going to want to do whatever they're doing. Yeah. And they're miserable for everyone. UI auto combo in Dragon Ball? Yeah, you you become so predictable. It's wild. Well, it's, it, and some of the, I don't know, Dragon Ball have a really big issue with the auto combo. The toxic in game. thing in Dragon so Ball toxic. is that like, auto switch. combos are freaking good. They're good they're op- and they like, switch. So like, you optimals. try to cross them up. You try to cross them up on the, the side and you get to the other side and then and Krillin just turns around and he puts your nuts and then you're taking 50% <laughs> damage. I'm like, God damn, I hate this game. Man. Yeah. No, I'm good on that. No. Yeah, I'm surprised. Like, I'm out of all the fighting games. Like, Guilty Gear Strive did not adopt that, and Thank that's God. a good thing. I think, Go ahead. I think the world would have actually exploded if they did. Like, people would be yeah, like, imagine a made with auto combos, bro. Like, to like, be 18, <laughs> we'd be dead. Okay. We'd all be dead. They get care. I don't know that man. Those combos, auto combo. Bro. Oh, bro. Auto combo chaos, bro. They get automatic. What I pressure. what I do think is interesting that they took out was um. Do you guys remember stylish mode from the previous Guilty Gear games and uh, mm-hmm. Blaze Blue? Uh, what is stylish yeah, yeah. mode anyways? Stylish mode is basically like every button is an auto combo. Yeah. <laughs> mm, and it oh, was God. like crazy. But if you really, really just wanted to like mash your forehead up against your controller and have something <laughs> happen, that was the way. Yeah. That was the way. Oops. My bad. Whoa there, man. We got, uh, what are you Whoa. doing over there? Whoa. Hey yo! Seen some new Jackal Tech, my bad. You know those, you know those, uh, those videos that like open up and they're just automatically moaning a lot as hell. Bro, that legit happened oh, yeah. one time, bro. I was so <laughs> cool. It had to be Facebook too. That's when I deleted Facebook. I'm like, dude, bro. I'm literally in line about to eat like a sub or whatever, and it's a place I go to like all the time. And legit, like. I'm just like this. I put my phone and that thing's loud. I'm like, oh my god. I try to play it off super slick too. Mm-hmm. Everybody's looking at him like, what the hell? That's a bad. Never happened to y'all before, like in a public place? Bro, no, because I'm a head- normal person. <laughs> I have headphones on. <laughs> nah, that's yeah. when you turn around to the person and be like, yo, what are you playing on That's your what phone I kind of did. I like looked at them and they're looking at me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that was me. At that point, bro, I leave it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I double goodness. down. <laughs> like, you don't hear nothing. Like, you don't even hear volume. nothing. It was like, what was that? The wind? I'm like, what was that? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Bro, man, what are some characters you got want to see added to the game? Slayer, Slayer, Slayer. Sin, uh, Johnny. Bro, if they add Johnny, I'm praying that he still has Bacchus' side. I just want ABA or Bridget. That's it. Those two characters. They yeah. look OD. Bridget, Bridget's really fun. Yo, I, I hope Yo, Bridget, I hope Bridget's added, but like because of the time skip, he's just super ripped. Like he's like 
seven feet tall, like potential size, and he's still just a mobile character with throwing out a yo yo. It'd be the funniest shit ever. <laughs> Dude, he looks like the Doge, you know, the buff Doge. That's why I want Bridget to look like. <laughs> why do you like. want Abba? Because she has a key. Who gives a fuck? Yo, you Abba's a cool. Kingdom Hearts player? No, I hate Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> what did you say about <laughs> Bro, Ultima and Abba? Oh, <laughs> right, bro. Yeah. Ultima Wielder, bro. Yo, I, want, I want to see, uh, I want to see Akuma. What hey, you want to see? Get the fuck out Akuma, oh, from, hey. Akuma from Street Fighter. Yo. From, from Tekken, bro. Akuma from Tekken. Akuma from Tekken. Oh, yeah. Hey. That, oh, my that, God. How calm or how likely, real talk, how likely do you think it is to see any sort of crossover character in Guilty Gear Strive as DLC? Do you think it could happen? No. Goku. No, I'm kidding. I don't <laughs> think it could happen, but the most likely character would Very be low Ragna the Ragna, Blanche, right? Yeah. Because in the end of the story, what happens... So the two universes are technically connected because you can make connections between Rachel and Slayer. Yes. They're both of the same like race from vampires. Both vampires. Yeah. So... Well, you can see, like, the end of the story where Ragnar becomes the Black Beast and he gets, like, decimated by the six heroes. He, like, he gets blipped out of existence. Like, Ragnar doesn't exist in the end of Blaze Blue. That's the end of the story. What? So, like, Ragnar the Blood Edge. Love that character, bro. Man, yeah. I got some stories about that character. My uh, favorite character okay. growing up was Ragnar. Big fan. Big edgy. Bro, big edgy. I... Whatever. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> so, it does look trippy. But, um, yeah, so at the end of the story, he gets, like, blipped out of existence. So you could, like... Theoretically, you know, say he got blipped into the Guilty Gear universe because they have some kind of like interdimensional connections. I think there's a negative like 12% chance that ever actually happens. A negative 12. But it's the only possible chance that I could ever see because I think Daisuke has been on like on record saying he has zero interest in guest characters because I think he really likes his lore because I think he um, decided to write a story and then make a fighting game around it. Yeah. Or he decided to make a music track and then make a fighting game around it. Or Strive, where he decided to make a fishing game and then make a fighting game around it. But, um, yeah, I, I I think it'd be pretty cool. Yo, I think it'd be dope. Me too. I don't know what he'd look like in that aesthetic. Like, the Strive aesthetic? We've only ever seen, you know, pixel art. So you basically want another soul yeah. bad guy. Bro, no, bro Ragnar's Soul's not just... Ragnar's order soul, all right? You, first of you all, have it straight. Yeah. First of all, Ragnar is sick as hell in a bunch of different ways that, that Soul... Like, he doesn't have... Okay, Soul carries around a big stick. Ragnar has a sword, like a that proper a sword that turns into a scythe. And he has, like, that, like, dark energy shit coming out of his sword and shit. It's he, he's got the He's got the Grimoire Azure, I believe it's called. Or yeah. Azure, Grimoire. Azure Grimoire. There we go. The Blaze Blue. The Blaze Blue. Blue. Yeah. He and, calls um, a character butt floss in the lore. That's canonical. <laughs> How can you not want this character? I would need an intro like that. He's like, what's up, butt floss? Bro, that's every intro he has with Bullet. I'm here for oh it. Oh, my God. That seems too chaotic. Even for <laughs> Probably because of her shorts. So good. All right, last topic. What are your future plans with Strive? We're going to start off with Herbs. Hold on, wait. I didn't ask the other question, did I? Bro. Oh, um, what, are some of your, uh, um, what are some changes you'd like to see in Strive? Yeah. Uh, real simple. Obviously, lobby system. Please give that a super buff. Like in the tournament aspect, like trying to host a tournament within that is kind of annoying because you have to like purposely let them get off and reset. That's like annoying. They need to fix that. Yeah. Um, what else? Add frame data, like Beefy said. And universal change that I need to see that I really hate is punishing moves that I feel like is designed to be punished is dust. I hate that thing with a passion. Like the the things like supposedly punishable, but it pushes them too far away. I want to have like a universal punish, punish that gold burst. I want that to be super punishable. And I don't know if this is in the previous Guilty Gears. For some reason, they they want people to go for gold burst because when you burst, it doesn't fully deplete your, your meter for the burst. I think that's really stupid and annoying. I feel like they should be disciplined and not have the meter. What else? Um, uh, I feel like make the other characters like the top tier characters because uh, without tension, I feel like they're super oldy. Like you can see like Ram, Happy Chaos, they're like godlike. Soul, just make their combos better, like as far as six Ps. Because I feel like a lot of characters are not rewarded with a lot of damage off of an anti air. And I think that may be it. Terp? Um, I would say probably. Definitely think something about positive bonus needs to be changed. Yeah. Like, um, I definitely think the top end characters they, like, they abuse it the best. Like, they get they get their offense. They get a lot. They gain a lot of meter, and they also they wall break. Pretty, they can convert into wall break really easily, mm. and that just leads into like snowball uh, snow snowball games where, oh, they broke wall. All right. Well, uh, hopefully they don't know how to use that meter well. Me, uh, meter well, but if they do. 
you get into really messed up like mixed situations where like it becomes really hard to make a, a comeback especially like a strong happy cast player if they're able to get positive bonus it's Those like GGs. man gg next yeah, you, you know gotta, if it's like a really really strong one of the top tier happy cast players it can really feel uh like an air surmountable lead just because they have that uh the meter gain from yeah, it. yeah even trying to negate their meter gain you're like fding oh but oh there goes all your bar in like two hits mm -hmm. so that's definitely why I would want to see On the change. damage, for me, I forgot to admit, I think the damage is a little bit too high, in my personal opinion, but I guess that's been in all the other Guilty Gears. But, uh, I think it's a little too low. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I need more damage, bro. Yeah. Oh, bro. bro, why why don't we TO, why isn't he TODing with one pop buster? Yeah, bro, that's crazy. I, man, I gotta work so hard for that one pop buster. Bro. <laughs> I got the Tempkin Sam play, I gotta work hard all no, bro. Oh. All you need <laughs> is one knockdown, that's it, bro. Oh, yeah. But uh, good luck getting that knockdown against uh, against like uh, really good players. <laughs> and creating a brief, you already said y'all point about yeah. on what y'all want to see change. All right, so we can move on to the next one, which is the last one is, what are your future plans with Guild Gear Strive? To be the best Jack on the world. Ooh. And I want to like help people out with Jacko. I want people to understand the matchup and help me get better. But that's my goal. Like I don't want to get like top. I want to be like a really I want to be a force to reckon with Jack. I'm like, all right, you need to watch check, you need to watch her. So my goal is definitely to improve. Also, um, help the community grow as well, too, and see people grow and become stronger. That's, like, one of my personal favorite things. And let me see. I don't know. Give me another good character, bro. <laughs> like, give me Ava or Jet so I can, like, grind. I, need, I feel like I honestly need, like, a secondary character I love. I haven't found that. I've been playing Happy Chaos, but I'm not really passionate with that. Player's pay style. I suggested uh, Zotto because I do think that Zotto fits your your style. Just, I'm just uh, scared I might not love Jacko no more, bro. Oh my <laughs> but, God. You know, why are you fine. afraid of not loving Jacko? Bro, because the thing is, Zotto is a 10 times better Jacko. Than just play Zotto. I don't know. And, but plus, it doesn't feel like I have the same bad matchup. So I got to like drop everything that I learned to learn Zotto. And Zotto doesn't twerk when he crouches. Exactly, yeah. 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 Big issue. Pros and cons. You can buy it in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of fun, though. That would be crazy. Derp, your future plans with Strive? Um, yeah, definitely I need to uh, grind more matchups and just uh, improve because um, I definitely, at this point, I, I want to be a more of a consistent, like, Potemkin because at the, at where I'm at right now with, like, getting busy with school and such, um, my, tip, my Potemkin is not... Uh, not consistent uh, as as I'd like as I'd like it to be, especially in a, a lot of matchups. Fair, fair, all right. Yeah. Creator, I'm trying to be one of the best in the whole country. Honestly, I really. Um, I mean, the other day, Latachi got on uh, Flynn's stream and he he said that uh, he that I have the worst defense he has ever <laughs> seen. Jesus, oh, no. wait, did you hear that during during the tournament? Or no? That was uh, after the tournament. Oh, so you watched it? My bad. Go ahead. Yeah, and I thought uh, you heard it while you was playing. No, no, no. Was it during the, his little um, when his he was little interview with Nightbreed? Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, you on stream. That's respect, cool. respect. I mean, Hotachi's the goat. I can't say much, um, but I want to be at a level where I can go toe to toe with people like Hotachi. Yeah. And I think I've proven uh, a couple times that I continuously get better. Yeah. I mean, I I was the first to end the Marvello supremacy. Yes, on. you were. Yep. Yes, that's true. And let it be known that last night we had a long hosting session in my house, and I didn't drop a single set to, to Marvello. I didn't drop a single set to anybody, actually. Ooh, nice. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm coming for Hotaji. Be it here at a local or at a major grand stage. Beef set? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no beef. I'm just, just kidding, bro. I'm such a competitive person that... I really have that drive. I really do. I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Beefy. You know, I'm gaming. I'm a pretty aloof person, so my, my goals with the game kind of switch on a daily basis, but I'm always trying to improve and understand the game better. I think it'd be pretty cool to uh, commentate a major, though. Yeah, I know, definitely. That would be dope. Uh, that'd be pretty fun. Just for the experience, see how it goes. I feel like, you know, I've been trying to improve myself both in the game and on the mic, so why not, you know? I'll commentate my own match when I when I'm winning uh, Evo. I'll also be the commentator for top eight. So. There's so many roles that you can take in the FGC that 
that's another thing is that like you don't have to feel like you have to be the best of the games to like be a part of the FGC. Like you could be a TO, you could be a commentator, you could be a player, you could be uh, like a lab monster. Even if like like if you're a tech god, you might not be actually amazing in matches, but you might just be really good at finding tech. I've I've seen people like that. Yeah. And oh. so there's so many different roles that you could take that you could feel empowered to not just be like, I only have a place here if I'm really good at the game. Yeah. I think the cool part is you can wear multiple hats. That too. You know? Yeah. Like you, you don't have to just do one thing. You can do so yeah. many avenues. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm so glad I'm back to TO in some online events because I always enjoy uh, being a TO. Get to commentate some stuff, come out, play some games. It's, it's fun to be able to wear those multiple hats and, you know, look at different perspectives from the FGC. My goal... Because I, I, for me, it's definitely, like, player-oriented. One thing that really strikes out to me is I think that I speak for most of us, but definitely for me and Turb, where, like, you know, Marvello is a huge inspiration for me. And it shows that, like, you know, there's this is someone who, like, has been playing fighting games for upwards of a decade if, or something like that and took time to, you know, teach me and Turb what we know now. And I think about, I, I frequently think about the fact that there's people in my age group and who are my contemporaries, like um, some that come to mind are obviously like Turb, uh, Chris, you know, Water One, FP, um, Miles. These are people who are around my same like age who have like the potential to blow up really strong if they, if they really put their mind to the game. And I can only sometimes think about like eventually we will be the Marvellos of our scene yeah. if you know if we stick around which yeah. I, which I, I would hope to um i can't imagine fgc not being a part of my life at this point to be honest and i think that's really dope to imagine like passing on the you know the torch the torch that that sounds super dope so i want to be involved for a really long time in whatever way possible yeah because I, I i do like the idea of hey you know if i if i'm not going to be competing anymore uh, i i at least want to contribute Contribute and then, of course, help bring up the next generation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's something they can't take away from you is knowledge, and that's what I love doing. Like spreading knowledge and seeing somebody implementing the gameplay is just phenomenal. Oh, 100% agree. Yeah, the amount of impact that. That's like, what I love. Just seeing a level of like somebody never, like Waluigi is actually doing good now. Like to actually see him utilizing the ramp pressure in the corner, and I'm just seeing the stepping stones. So. Yeah, no, I, I love seeing people improve. It's crazy. Um, I think that's one of the funnest parts. Dude, like community is the real reason to play fighting games. Yeah. Like, above... Oh, agreed. Oh, the game looks cool, the combos, this and that, but the community is it. That's the reason. Yeah. That's why we're here. Exactly. That's why That's why we're here at 11.17 in the freaking oh morning on a Sunday. <laughs> 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 I feel like 11.17 is early. Bro, that's I wake up at, like, 1 p.m. regularly. This is, like... Yeah, man, man, early. Early. You're working yeah I will, I will curve up shifts, anyway. Though. This is upstanding citizen behavior on my part. I do not do this. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm cursed to be up at 6:30 every morning. <laughs> Same. Oh, I wake up early. I'm oh, you guys. That's what time I go to sleep. Hey, hey, you have more <laughs> no, hey, you have more hours. I'm but not yeah, kidding. I'm being degenerate. But yeah, I agree with Creator on that. Like, community is the is the reason why you get into the FGC because you know, as um, Creator and Beefy said, like you go, you can fulfilled many roles in the FGC. Like, even if you're not good in fighting games, you still have a place in the community. And, and, and like to do great like things. Said, was that? Some people just like watching, like Beefy said, that they're oh, just like more of a spectator. Four years. Yeah. Four years. Same. It is what it is. You just, every form of enjoyment is valid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Go do what you think is fun. That's what I say. All right. With that being said, um, we'll be taking any questions in the chat. This is now the chat's time to ask any of us questions that you guys want answered on the podcast and then of course while we're waiting if you guys have anything that you guys want to share or okay all right we got one i got one gamers heaven gamers heaven south Florida says do you need a fight stick to be good or can people play with the controller you need a hitbox to be good i'm sorry <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm playing. I mean, you're not entirely wrong. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm playing. You can be good with anything. I mean, Hitachi's a pad player. So if you ever want to look at literally the, the highest level NA player and maybe the highest level player of Guilty Gear Strive in the world right now, they, they play on a, a regular controller. So yeah. Sonic Fox plays on pad. Yeah. Yeah. Sonic Fox plays on That's like the best. He's like the. Or they're, they're, they're like, like the, the best player of fighting game history. Would you like, say I like Sonic like is like the LeBron or Michael Jordan of of fighting games currently, right? Yeah. I would yeah. say. 
the issue right now is I feel like they're not playing anything. There's not a game for them to play. play. But, but, like, whatever game they're interested in, they're always top players. But even then, like, (laughs) I think that Sonic Fox is such a good player that, like, oh, my God. When it happens, they'll be there and (laughs) it'll be crazy. They could probably play anything. It's whether or not they want to. Right. That's really what it is. Yeah, we didn't even get a question. We just got a statement from uh, ECG Miles saying that Herb's Jocko free. Don't worry, I'm coming from Baltimore, bro. I'm going to destroy him in his own game. And then Nightbreed so. just told him to go to sleep. <laughs> I will say that when it comes um, to answering um, Gamers Heaven South Florida's question is you can you can be good at anything. You can be good with any character depending on what you feel comfortable with at the end of the day. Like, there are some – like, for me, I feel comfortable with Nago on a fight stick, but on a controller, just like, no. But I feel control. I feel comfortable with biking on controller, but not on fight stick. Like, it, it, it varies, like – Different characters vary for, you know, a lot of people, especially, you know, how they play with them. But it all comes down to just preference. do you, yeah, preference and do you feel comfortable yeah. using this controller or fight stick or hitbox with this character? If you do, great. Continue forward. If not, try something else or try a different and, character. And if anything, that's another reason, uh, like, for someone, if they have locals near them, to go to locals. Because then you can, you, I mean, generally people are pretty, like, uh, open uh especially after, after you like talk to them a bit like you can like try out other controllers or whatever yeah, yeah. you have to like go first time i used hitbox was yours hmm. really yeah you let me your hip let me use your hitbox that was the first time i touched one. Oh, i, bu- I yeah because the creator usually br- bring his own um, big um fight stick or whatnot oh, yeah. yeah at the victrix with like and, five different wires and stuff bro and <laughs> so the thing is too um i don't think that you need a fight stick or like a hitbox or anything like that to be good I do think it's really fun, actually. I think that just on a pure fun factor, I think they're really fun to use. And I think that you should give yourself the opportunity of trying it for a little bit, even just to see if you like the feel. Although, yeah. although I would say, like, um, I'd be very careful about gang, like, if you're not, like, experienced in, like, using the arcade stick, uh, like, ever. I'd be very careful about, like, splurging on, like, a fight stick. Oh, no, don't splurge. Yeah. Well, yeah. so I think oh. the best entry-level fight stick, if anyone's actually interested, is the live ball. It's the um, drone. I think it's the Hori Rock. Quanba drone. Quanba drone's really good. Yeah. It's uh, it's about $80. It's a solid flight stick. Lasts me two years. So, like, I think there's a lot of, like, Entry expensive. level. There's a lot, yeah. of, Honestly, a little I, bit less expensive. It's like some forty dollar fight sticks, but you oh, get those. Yeah. They're like breaking within like also, a week. I, I think, especially at home, like the, probably the most cost effective. Yeah, you're or right. Eventually, to lead into, it would actually be you could try playing keyboard. That's cursed. Like, don't don't do that. <laughs> That's cursed. No, there's some people that play yeah, on keyboard. You, you, I, I play. He's on, not I wrong. play on keyboard on the uh, in Tekken. That's actually. demonic behavior for me. Wait, you and, play Tekken? <laughs> well, I play it a little bit. Oh. Like not but, not seriously, but um. And, like, back to the controller thing, like, also, I feel like don't be pressured, I guess, by, like, what character choice you do. Um, so, Chris, Water 1 plays Zado on pad, which... Uh, unheard if, of. That's the thing. Like, you say unheard of, but, like, Beautiful Dude, when the game came out, did a um, video on how to play Zado on pad. So, like, you can you can be the person that, like, tries something out like that and makes it happen. Because I would say it's unheard of. I, there's no way I could play Zado on pad. I can't play Zado on stick. But uh, there ain't no way I'd be able to do that on pad. So um, I'm laughing at buckets. He's like WASD and Tekken is tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it, it's a, it's a method. You know the mix box is out there for a reason. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I think uh, don't comfort's a keyboard. Bit- I just think that at the end of the day, it's a controller for everybody. Me personally, the main reason I use my hitbox is just I feel like it's it just pays off in the long run. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if you get a controller, like if you want to do it, by all means, go for it. But you're gonna keep spending 60, 60, 60, 60, like every two or three months because all the bungee print. Unless you want to open up your controller and do that. But yeah, yeah, it depends on your goals. Yeah, and also the most important thing is like uh, some people are like nervous at talking to people. Me, no, but at least with your hitbox or fight stick, whatever, you can like be creative and then like opens conversations too. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. I, I do think that's the coolest part about playing like a hitbox Ooh, or a stick a is the creativity that comes out or like the art that you can put on it. I love customizing. Right, that I stuff. remember coming out with the first Flint sermon with the. Like basically an obsidian with a, a WSD instead Ooh, of a like joystick. Yeah. Bro, that <laughs> was crazy. Like, like, like the first match I, I, I played, literally the keys like fell off. And I was like, oh, shit, that is so I to, awkward. I had to pick it up off the ground and like fix it. Uh, uh, but. All right, one more question from Gamers Heaven in South Florida. Do you guys think being good in one fighting game translates to most other fighting games? Like going to one fighting game to another? 
It can, but not necessarily. It's not a rule. I would say yes and no because I came from Mortal Kombat, transitioning to Guilty Gear Strive. I kind of felt a little bit lost because the RPS in that game was not as heavy. Like the rock, paper, scissors, like the decision making and how fast you got to make those decisions, it didn't really transfer over. Because mm. in the game I played, it was like super neutral heavy, but this one, like you barely have any time to think. You have to do like some crazy option selects. So I would say the answer to the question would be yes and no. Yeah, because if yeah. you play multiple different fighting games, they definitely help you in certain aspects and stuff. Yeah, I think it depends on uh, what you get good at at that fighting game. Like, if you get really good at, like, I would say, like, uh, offense, like, some that, that won't necessarily translate, like, the best to certain uh, games. Like, it just depends on what that game, like, uh, benefits the most out of. Like, if you come from, like, I don't know, I can't think of an example, but like for instance, like a game that uh, heavily is like defensive, and then you go to like Guilty Gear Strive or whatever, or go to a game where it's heavily offensive. It's like it's definitely not the it's not gonna translate a hundred percent. I think what's important to remember is that when you're getting good at anything, the most important thing and the most important factor to getting good is how you learn. Yeah. What is your method of learning? Do you have a good learning philosophy? Do you have a good learning regimen? Those things are the things that you, like when you become good at something, you understand what it takes to grind that skill and to like, you know, have the right mentality. That's the stuff that carries over and it allows you to kind of like look at things with a different perspective from, cause when you play, you're no longer looking at things from a perspective of like, I want to win. You're looking at like, I want to learn, I want to learn, I want to learn, I want to learn. Bro. Yeah. And that's what's going to get you there. Bro, STEM majors on the uh, on fighting games, bro. <laughs> what? It's just uh, I don't know. I think I think it it well, I think it translates pretty well. Nerds, <laughs> nerds, nerds in the fighting oh, yeah. games. Nerds. Oh hell yeah. And I think it's it's kind of like comparing any other genre going between games. Um, I remember when Valorant was coming out, a lot of uh, Overwatch professionals were were going to Valorant because Overwatch was in a bad place at the time and you could be like, well, I'm not going to talk about genres. They're both first person shooters, right? Yeah. And there's some Overwatch players that ended up going to Valorant and became really, really, really strong. And there's some that their skills that they learned from Overwatch didn't carry over to Valorant and they were struggling. not, they're, they're struggling. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of the same thing in fighting games. Like it's the same thing, you know, like with different genres of, of any type of game is Depending on who you are, sometimes you take those skills and you easily adapt them to to the next game you play. And sometimes you take those skills and it's it's a struggle. It like doesn't work out. Yeah. You've seen some Smash players get really really strong at traditional fighting games, and there are skills that you can take from a game, a platform fire like Super Smash Bros. and adapt them, such as you know footsies. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, so so it's something you see between genres, and I think it's just some people are able to take the skills they've learned and easily apply them and be like, it's the same thing. And some people's brains just are like, man, this is all new to me. I mean, if you take the AT&T Annihilator Cup that just happened <laughs> as, you know, for Street Fighter. Um, so Doublelift, who is a, you know, really well-known, like, North American League of Legends player, mm -hmm. he has a slight history of dabbling with Ultra Street Fighter 4, but he didn't really play Street Fighter 5 like that, to my knowledge. And he actually took the tournament versus a bunch of other, like, so relatively amateur streamers. And I think the main thing that sets him apart isn't that he's, like, innately godlike at Street Fighter 5 because he does not play Street Fighter 5, but it's something like someone like Doublelift, they know what it takes to get good at something. They yeah. have that learning mentality, learning philosophy, and it's, like, a problem-solving thing. I actually think, you know, just on a deeper level, um, I remember back when I was a kid, uh, you know, parents would be like, oh, you know, video games rot your brain and stuff like that. I actually think video games are super good for people developing critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, especially for kids, like for young kids. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually really good for their development. Obviously, everything within moderation, but um, fighting games essentially becomes really intricate moment to moment problem solving and that's super fun i agree helps you read people you know mm -hmm. i agree when, when you're interrogating someone in the future one more question this is from ecg miles how often a day do you guys practice me barely once a week or twice a week i'm probably embarrassed to say i'll be like in the lab i feel like i'm more in the lab than actually playing matches so it's like crazy i just feel like the sky's the limit as, that counts as practice though yeah yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. How often, like, how long do you play per day? Mm. Like, actual matches, like, in total? Between, in total. In, in total. total. I'll probably, like, say, like, maybe three hours, four hours. Okay. Huh. Yeah, like, three to four hours. Do you work? Hmm? No, I'm steady looking for a job now. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably on average every day, because I also, there's sometimes I, like, miss a day. It's probably around... Around now, around like like an hour, like probably. thirty thirty minutes, yeah, or like uh, just a very sh- like short because because uh, of school. Yeah. But actually, as of very very recent, um, it's it's gone up, um, but definitely before I like it was definitely there were times where I w- wasn't playing uh, like games for like uh, like th- there were definitely a lot of three day like um, gaps or like a lot of like gaps in in between days where I wouldn't practice, but. Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely biting me now, but <laughs> definitely I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit more uh, into the grind recently. For me, um, also recently, it was like the past month I barely played. Um, like I said, uh, going to that local where Hotashi was last week at Flynn's and then AJ, losing to some of those people um, definitely fired me up. So as of the past week, I've been playing around three hours per day. I try to do like an hour and a half in the daytime before work and then like an hour and a half or two hours after work. And that's usually how much I get in per day. Um, I skip some days, you know, it's not religious. It's not a job. It's just, I like it. Okay. Beefy. Wait, you guys play this game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm not with you out. But uh, back when I was working, uh, I honestly didn't practice as much as maybe I, I wanted to. Uh, work was kicking my ass, but... Uh, recently, since I've had a, a lot more free time, I've been uh, grinding a bit, like four or five hours a day, trying to try and improve, Let's trying to get my placements up. Because before I was like, I was probably playing like two or three hours like a week. Okay. So I've been I've been really trying to to improve. Yeah, All right. we're on it. Well, Luigi. Oh. Uh, for the past two weeks, I worked like 117 hours. Hey, respect. But I've been able to play maybe like a good hour, hour and a half a day or so. And then some offline training with Herbs made it even more bonus points. Shout out Herbs. Yeah, I get a lot of my time from from tournaments. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Me too. Yeah. All right, y'all. So with there, since there's no any further questions, I guess we can just go put a bow on this and wrap this up. That being said, I would like to thank everyone on this um, panel to you know for joining us on this episode greatly appreciate having you guys on and you know sharing your perspectives on everything guilty gear strive related can't wait to have at least y'all three as individual guests in the future yes so that way i can you know explore not just with strive but your gaming origins your background story everything about just video games all in general and whatnot and then of course just you know your journey from as you were young to now as an adult from you know when it came to video games and whatnot so expect that dm dope dope i'm down hell yeah expect it and yeah i mean other than that this was this has been a great episode for i mean for this this week. This Best episode week, of the week yeah. is fine. Sunday morning. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry too. So. It's the, it's Me too. My brain's <laughs> yes, I tell you, respect the senpai. He told us he was here until two last night babysitting the Smash players. Out here. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, like I thought it was past their bedtime at that Ugaga. point. <laughs> like, bro. Nah, it's like, wild. nah, it, 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 it's crazy because after the tournament's done, like we was done at 12, we, you had people still here at two in the morning still grinding. The time be flying though, bro. Yeah. Don't like, worry, I got, I, I, I'm sorry, but I got to appeal to the Smash players real quick because I've been roasting them all day. Kazuya Mishima. <laughs> hey, let me find out, bro. Yo. I'm going to go over there and cook all the Smash players, bro. Just give me one month. I'm cooking them all. Bro. There's only one good Kazuya player in. Bro, South my boy Omnilax, I'm hyped for him. That dude is so cool. <laughs> Biggest Omni Last fan in the world right he here. Get, he gets some upsets. He sponsored, gets some upsets. Sponsored by FAU. I, I brought that kid up. Not, not really. Oh, he my God. But big Omni Lax fan. I tell you, best best collegiate. If you're not looking at the collegiate circuit of Super Smash Bros, Omni Lax is the best player in the scene. Of course, you got my boy Arsenic coming right, right behind him. He's getting me as much at the locals. But Omni Lax, I'm telling you, he's making PR this season. He's going to do it again. I tell you, it's really... You guys picked the wrong tournaments to do PR is all I'm saying. Now, oh now Blue is back on PR. I'm going to have to come back to the scene. He's okay. right. He's taking them all out. Kazuya Mishima is about to destroy him. Oh, my God. <laughs>
I'm I'm a big fan of him. Big fan. Big fan. Oh uh, man, this this has been great. This has been great. This really has. <laughs> um, Waluigi. Guys, Any? thank you guys so much for being here. It's an honor like, having you guys as Strive players show off and tell about your histories and such and your interests, and even with the future of the game. There's definitely a lot of definition. Can't wait to have you guys individually. Thank you. All right. That being said, Wario, uh, with, uh, with that Breakfast being time. said, yeah, yeah, we, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm starving. <laughs> that Man being said, run. yeah, man. Great With that being said, this has been episode 51 of the South Florida Gamers podcast. We are signing out. Peace. Peace.